So today we're going to learn how to evaluate differential equation in calculus. Now by definition, differential equations are equations that contain a derivative. Now in our first example, let's find all functions y such that it satisfies the differential equation dy over dx is equal to e to the x minus 6x squared. Now to evaluate this function so that we can find the original function which is y, we need to take the integral of both sides of our equation. Now to do that the first step that you need to do is to take notice of our dy over dx. Now to integrate both sides you just need to cross multiply dx or your denominator and move it to the second part of your equation so we can integrate the left side and the right side of our equation. So now we have the integral of dy equal to the integral of e to the x minus 6x squared dx. So now that we can separate the equation, we are now ready to integrate both sides of our equation. Now the integral of dy is simply y and the integral of the function dx will be e to the x minus 6x cubed all over 3 plus c. So therefore our function or all the functions of y in this differential equation is y equal to e to the x minus 2x cubed plus c for simplifying 6 over 3. And this is what we call as the general solution to the differential equation from the original problem. And that is one of the problems that we're going to be working on today in evaluating differential equation. Now let's have our second example. Now for this example, we're going to find a unique solution to the equation dy over dx equal to e to the x minus 6x squared whose graph passes through point 1 and 0. Now for example number 2, if you'll notice, it is the same differenti differential equation that we used on example number 1. But this time, it is very specific that this particular equation should pass or will pass through the point 1 and 0. So the first step is to find our um, differential equation and integrate both sides of the equation by doing the first step that we did on our first slide. So get rid of dx on your other side of your equation by cross multiplication. So therefore we can have the integral of dy and the integral of the function dx, which will give us y equal to e to the, e to the x minus 2x cubed plus c. And this is how we integrate our first or our di differential equation. Now the second step is to find the specific value of our c, which is basically substituting the value of your point, which is 1 and 0, to our function. So y is equal to e to the x minus 2x cubed plus c. Replace x and y by 1 and 0, and you'll have 0 equal to e to the 1 minus 2 times 1 cubed plus c, which gives you 0 equal to e minus 2 plus c. And to find the value of c, we just have to isolate it and transfer e minus 2 to the other side of the equation. So we'll have negative e plus 2, which is equal to the constant or the function or the letter c in our differential equation a while ago. Now, for step number 3, we're just going to complete our equation by replacing c from step number 2 by negative e plus 2. So we'll have y equal to e to the x minus 2x cubed minus e plus 2, which is your value of c from step number 2. And by simplifying it, we can answer it as y equal to e to the x minus 2x cubed plus 2 minus e. And that is the second example of our differential equation or evaluating differential equation using integration. Now let's have our third example. Now for our third example, we're going to determine whether the function is a solution of the differential equation y double prime minus y equal to zero. And we'll have our three sets of function and we're going to verify each one of them if it's going to satisfy the solution for the differential equation y double prime minus y equals zero. So let's start with the first one. So for y equal to 4e minus x, since we're verifying it to the differential equation, we will need our first derivative and our second derivative so we can complete our work. So the first derivative of 4e to the negative x is negative 4e to the negative x. And the second derivative of that function will be y double prime equal to 4e to the negative x. Now since we have all the necessary um, 
functions that we need to satisfy if it's going to be a solution to the differential equation, we're going to substitute our y double prime by 4e to the negative x minus y, which is 4e to the negative x, and see if it's going to be equal to zero. And by doing so, we know that we can subtract 4e to the negative x minus 4e to the negative x, which is equal to zero. Therefore, for the first function, we satisfied the differential equation to be the solution for this exa example. Now, for example number two, or equation letter B, we have y equal to sine x. So just like what we did on example letter A, we're going to verify if it's a solution to the differential equation. So we will have our function and the first derivative, which is cosine x, and the second derivative, which is negative sine x. So by substituting it to the differential equation, we can be able to verify if it's a solution of y double prime minus y equal to zero. Since we have negative sine x minus sine x is equal to zero, which will give us negative two sine x, we know that it's not equal to zero, and therefore, for the second function, this is not a solution to our differential equation y double prime minus y. And for the third example, let's find the first and the second derivative of c e to the negative x. Its first derivative is negative c e to the negative x, and its second derivative is c e to the negative x. Now, using our differential equation and by substitution, we know that c e to the negative x minus c e to the negative x is indeed equal to zero. Therefore, the last function that we have, which is y equal to c times e to the negative x, is a solution to our differential equation.